In a post-Texas and Oklahoma Big 12, is BYU football the biggest brand in the conference? One national pundit thinks so, and we're also talking with Cody Epps. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. As we are fond of saying, we are your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And a big thank you for all of your support. Please subscribe, rate, review, and continue to share this with your family and friends. If you have Cougar fans that you're associated with who may not know about the podcast, please share it with them. Would absolutely love to continue to grow this this audience. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. I was reading a preview from College Football News and Pete Futak, who's been around the college game forever. I love Pete. He's been on my radio show multiple times. And he wrote a preview of BYU, as he does for all 133 FBS programs. He does it about the entirety of the offseason. And by the way, it's a very thorough breakdown. You can go to collegefootballnews.com uh, and check it out. It's great content. But he has a very interesting take as his kind of an opening stanza of his BYU preview. Preview. It says this cranks up the surly side of other Big 12 fan bases, so keep this just between us. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about this. But the question is will BYU be the biggest deal football program in the Big 12 once Texas and Oklahoma leave? Basketball-wise, this is a vastly different thing, but when it comes to football, who's going to be the anchor tenant in the Big 12 mall? With an international fan base that goes just beyond a normal rooting interest, think oranges to Notre Dame apples, and with the Salt Lake City market right there with Kansas City and Cincinnati in terms of media reach, and with the past success as the only football program in the 2024 conference version, speaking of the Big 12, with a national title since 1945, it's all right there for BYU to step in and become a star. Says being that only happens with success, of course, fans are going to tune in if there's a start in a given year like TCU in 2022. But again, BYU is a different type of school with a different type of football program. Win or lose, BYU will be a talking point now that it's in the Big 12. Unquote. Well, I think Pete nailed it, honestly. Uh, and I'm I, that probably shouldn't bury the lead like that, keep you guys a little more engaged with this, but let me explain. Brigham Young University has a literal international reach now not every person that is associated with the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints the sponsoring institution of brigham young university are quote-unquote ardent fans of the byu athletic programs mainly football is what we're talking about here because he acknowledges basketball is a very different thing in basketball i would point to kansas i'd point to houston i would point to i don't know three or four other programs who probably are the bigger brands in basketball than BYU is, even though BYU's got a very recognizable brand in basketball in and of itself. The point here is all about BYU football, and I agree with Pete Futak that after Texas and Oklahoma leave, the quote-unquote blue bloods that have propped up and been the mainstays or the, the attractions for the Big 12 Conference, it's very hard to argue that BYU's not going to be the biggest brand, just speaking of the capital B brand, left in the Big 12 after those two programs leave. Now, this is a very interesting take because he is going to obviously get all kinds of fan bases riled up, especially amongst the, I guess we're calling them the the Elite Eight. I don't know what you call them. The remaining eight of the holdovers from the Big 12 Conference. I'm sure Oklahoma State, Kansas State, even Kansas to a degree on down to Baylor and TCU are thinking, hey, we've got recognizable brands in and of, our, in and of, our, of itself, but they don't understand the appeal and just the mass... Um, how do you say this? The recognizability, the recognition, I don't know how to say it, recognition probably that BYU and that, that Oval Y and just the BYU brand has. It literally goes international. Anybody who is associated with a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, essentially you are one step removed from being associated with Brigham Young University, it feels like. And I, I could be wrong about that. Maybe not every single one is the six degrees of separation from the LDS Church and BYU, I, to use the analogy with the Kevin Bacon alliteration, you know what I'm talking about. The bigger thing is I think BYU absolutely has an opportunity to be one of the more recognizable, if the not the most recognizable brand in the Big 12. Now, can other brands 
prop themselves up like TCU did last year, making that run to the college football playoff national title game. Absolutely, they can. But the 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 appeal, the staying power, is going to be the big question mark. And BYU, simply due to its church affiliation, like I said, with the LDS faith, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, that is going to hold appeal for millions of people around the world because of the association with the church. So, like I said, not every single one of those people who is associated with the church and or BYU are going to be quote unquote fans. But I can tell you this much. I have been to enough uh, of BYU's road games during independence and talked with enough BYU fans during those uh uh, opportunities to do so when I've been out on the road. I can think of times I went to Texas. I think of times I've went to uh, Wisconsin. When I talked with people, not even maybe BYU fans, but I talked with people who said, hey, we know about BYU. We know the brand. We know what BYU does. And uh, we're going to have an interview. I needed a little uh, more time to edit it uh, with Kalani Sitake on tomorrow's podcast. I'll have it done in time for that show. So stay tuned for that, an exclusive one-on-one with BYU's head coach. And he talks about the fact that the biggest thing, he says the biggest, uh, quote-unquote, big-time thing about BYU athletics right now is BYU's fan base. And I think that goes in and of itself. Cougar fans are literally nationwide. They have shown up in every corner of this country to support BYU football in particular when they've gone through that independent era over the past 12 seasons. That will continue on into the Big 12. You can expect that BYU fans are going to show up in Lawrence, Kansas when BYU plays their first ever Big 12 game in mid-September. You can expect they'll show up at Texas. You can expect they'll show up at Oklahoma State. No, no matter where BYU plays, even as in uh, even when they go to Arkansas, there is going to be a healthy contingent of BYU fans who are both local to those areas as well as BYU fans traveling from wherever they happen to live, whether it's along the Wasatch Front, out on the West Coast, or maybe seemingly uh, nearby to those locales and taking an opportunity to go out and watch BYU. There's just this mass appeal that BYU has. And is it going to eventually uh, cause some uh, Big 12 fan bases to resent BYU? Absolutely. They probably already have uh, factions of them who already resent the fact that BYU is so recognizable on an international scale. But the thing about it is it can have a cascading effect down to the Big 12's other programs because of BYU's appeal. There are going to be opportunities for BYU, should they be part of this new fangled idea for the Big 12 to get into Mexico, that should allow them to go out and hopefully garner more attention for the Big 12 conference because the recognizability of BYU's brand in and of itself. So I, I get that why uh, Pete Futex says, hey, this gets B- Big 12 fans surly, and he's right. It does, because you want to think of your program as having the same appeal, and these other programs, by and large, outside of UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati, have been Power 5 programs for decades, if not 100 plus years, uh, with the affiliations they've had with these conferences. BYU is going to be resented for that fact, but here's the thing. Isn't BYU resented on so many other fronts, it feels like, in certain circumstances? So, you know what? Embrace it, Cougar fans. You are well-known. You're worldwide recognizable when it comes to traveling and supporting BYU, no matter where the Cougars play. And that's a badge of pride to take on you. And I completely agree with Pete Futek. BYU is going to be that quote-unquote anchor of the Big 12 mall after Texas and Oklahoma leave. Think about it. If you've if you ever seen some of these malls in recent years, I can think of the down in Provo, the what they call it? I remember what the, is it the Provo Town Center. Uh, they, for so many years, had Dillard's as one of their anchor tenants. Well, Dillard's uh, moved out of that corner spot that they had at the Provo Town Center Mall, and it sat empty, and it really affected the foot traffic going to the Provo Town Center Mall. Now, you may disagree with how malls are kind of falling by the wayside with the proliferation of being able to buy stuff on Amazon online. And I, trust me, I'm an internet shopper more than I am an in-person shopper. But guess what? Those anchor tenants in each one of these malls, they're very important for foot traffic and the viability of those shopping centers. And I think that's absolutely BYU. Yes, it's going to be maybe the most recognizable brand in terms of just sheer recognizability worldwide and both nationwide for the Big 12. But it can have a positive impact on the Big 12 conference because people are going to say, okay, Who's BYU playing these days? I'm going to look at that. Oh, they're playing in the Big 12 Conference. I'm going to look at some of these other programs. There's a trickle-down effect that's going to help the Big 12, even if it is going to make some Big 12 fans very surly. But nonetheless, you kind of make do with it and do what you will and uh, move on with it. So I appreciate uh, Pete Futek kind of saying the, the quiet part out loud, and I completely agree with him. I think it's it's a big deal. And he also adds this in the very end of it. He says, you're in BYU. You made it. Now go make the Big 12 yours. And I absolutely agree. You've got to go out and win games. BYU's got to be competitive. You can't go out and lay a dud and maybe go three and nine this year. 
I, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I think six and six would be a great debut. Anything beyond that, guess what? That brand that BYU has, it's only going to get bigger and bigger as time goes on in theory. And BYU's got to take care of their end of the bargain by winning at a pretty consistent clip. But I don't see any reason why they can't do that in the Big 12 Conference. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to switch over and talk with Cody Epps. Had a great conversation with him Monday afternoon after BYU's Media Appreciation Golf event out at Cedar Hills Golf Club. Uh, had a lot to say with regards to how he's been received after his little foray into the transfer portal, his newfound golf addiction. A, a lot of great talk and also looking forward to the upcoming move to the Big 12 in this upcoming season. We'll get to that conversation here momentarily. Now, first a word on our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel's been working with us for a few months now but the best part it is baseball season, my friends. It's in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on all of the action than with our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers, you can get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to, uh, to join today. The best part about FanDuel, my friends, you can get paid out instantly. I- I've worked with other uh, betting uh, companies where you have to hit like a reserve amount of money to be able to get your cash out the money that you've earned. Bet on, uh, not bet. <laughs> FanDuel does not require that. They get you uh, the money to you as soon as you want to cash out. You win your first bet, you want to cash out right away, they will do that for you guys. So don't miss out on your chance to get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today once again. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up now. That's FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your routine, my friends. Thank you for making it uh, uh, just essentially uh, being an everyday, I should say, with us right here on the network. Coming up on tomorrow's show, as I said earlier, we're going to have Kalani Satake, a one-on-one conversation with him. Funny enough, he talks a little bit about BYU's uh, first, uh, I guess, foray into trying to get into the Big 12 Conference back in 2016. He explains what his role was in all that, and obviously looking forward now to BYU being just days away. It's big week down there in Provo as BYU gets ready for their official entrance into the Big 12 on Saturday. Time now to let you guys hear from Cody Epps. Had a great conversation with him on Monday as well. Uh, a lot of good stuff uh, in terms of what he expects from himself as well as Keaton Slovis this fall. What he hopes to do alongside guys like Chase Roberts and Keanu Hill in the wide receiver position. And also, he acknowledges what went into his decision to go into the transfer portal, what the reaction's been from his teammates since he came back out of the portal, and how he expects to move forward with BYU. So here you go. Cody Epps speaking with myself Monday afternoon at BYU, excuse me, outside of Cedar Hills Golf Club. Getting ready for big season ahead. Obviously, the Big 12 is right here on the deck. How cool is that to think that you're just days away literally from being in the Big 12 conference? Um, pretty sick. Pretty exciting. Pretty anxious about it, mm-hmm. personally. Um, But as a team, we're just looking forward to getting through with summer training, Mm -hmm. making sure that we're going into the season healthy, strong, um, ready to go so we can play um, as many games as we can and be healthy as a team. So pretty exciting, but we're we're focused with the task at hand, which is training right now. Now, obviously, you had a little bit of an interesting offseason, obviously, with your decision to hop in the portal and then exit it. Uh, What's been the reception like coming back? It's been... Same as when I was here, okay. the two days that I was not in the portal. <laughs> yeah. um, the biggest thing for me is just all internal. Just sure. me, you know, trying to re-implement myself as a leader, mm-hmm. um, be someone that the guys can lean on. Because, you know, it was two days, but those two days were, were pretty dramatic and pretty, um, you know, heartfelt and pulled on a lot of heartstrings, especially with my teammates and the people around me, like my coaches. So I'm just trying to do the best that I can just to let everybody know that I'm here, I'm locked in, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to do anything that I can to make sure everybody know that um, I love them and care about them and I'm, I'm proud to be a Cougar. So. What was the response from your teammates? Like when you went in versus when you came out, were they all like, hey, we're, we support you 100%? What was mm-hmm. the reaction? So yeah, of course you get the guys that you're closest with on the team that hit you up and reach out and just say, hey man, we're, 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 we're with you with mm-hmm. any decision that you make. But obviously, you know, as a team, they're gonna be a little um, frustrated and a little caught yeah. off guard, you know, just because it was, um, for a lot of people, it was kind of just out of nowhere, you sure. know. Yeah. That was a perception. So, um, like I said, I just I just want to do the best that I can to make sure that everybody knows that mm-hmm. that was a hiccup and that's some adversity that I want to build build on as a family, build on as a team, and make sure that everybody knows that I'm here for the long run and I'm here to be a Cougar forever. So, Now, you got injured last season. How yeah. are you feeling health-wise right now? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. My shoulder's feeling really good. Was, was, was your shoulder last yeah, year? Okay. It was right shoulder. Everybody okay. thought it was my wrist. It okay. wasn't my wrist. It was my shoulder, but okay. um, it's feeling really good right now. You see, I got my range of motion. Got back, it all so back, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, now it's just about getting stronger, getting faster, and okay. ready to work. 
Now, Keaton's coming in as the quarterback. Uh, what's it been like working with him through uh, during your offseason workouts, et cetera? It's been pretty fun, man. It's been pretty fun. Throwing with him is amazing just because the way he understands the game and approaches every day and he comes in to work and he comes in to um, – Get the fine-tuned details in, sure. which I, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm, I'm, I'm really high on things like that, like the yeah. intricate details, um, each and every step, each and every rep, each and every, you know, thing that we do. I want to make sure that I'm detailed in and I'm dialed in. So it's pretty fun working with him, but it's even fun, <laughs> even more fun golfing with him uh, when we're not working together. So. Yeah, who's the better golfer? Keaton's probably the better golfer. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm getting pretty good, but I gotta, I got I got a lot more golf to play before I can, you know, solidify that I'm better than a lot of people. When did you pick it up? Last year. Oh, so, so you're, started, you're, yes. you're, you're new then? Yes. Like, okay. So, yeah, the Kalani Classic was the first tournament or, like, first golf I ever done. And then ever since okay. then, I took it on heads. It, it caught a hold of you. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> I cannot stop playing. I play almost after I'm done training and after I'm do, uh, done doing my personal receiver training, course, yeah. I'm on the course. Hey, so. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, you, Keanu, and Chase are kind of the three lead guys at wide receiver this year. Yeah. How, how do you feel you guys are kind of coalescing as a, as a unit right there as wide receiver? Perfect. Perfect. I mean, the thing, the thing about us is we've been, we've been through the ringer all together. Yeah. So we've been here together throughout this time. I think my first year when I got here was COVID, which was Keanu coming off of his redshirt season. And then Chase came back that next year from his mission, and I had to redshirt that season for my foot. Yeah. So, like, we've all kind of flowed into where we are right now together, which makes it even better because we, we've all been through the ringer. We've all been through the steps to get to where we are right now. So, yeah. So... Darius and Keelan in particular coming in via the transfer portal, what are they going to offer in your opinion? Uh, they're dogs. They're dogs, and they, they play football at a very high level. Yeah. Um, very great ball players, very great, great personalities. Like they've, they've only been here for two weeks, but Keaton and I keep talking about how good this receiver court and this team is going to be for the transfers that we got, the personalities that they have. They just mesh so well with the group that I think it's going to be seamless. You know, it's not going to be like, you know, two new dudes coming in. Uh, how are they going to do? Like, no, these dudes are amazing and they're great people and great, have great personalities. So last thing for me is now as you look towards the season ahead, what do you what do you feel like you guys are capable of accomplishing? I'm sure a lot of people out there, if you look at the polls and whatnot, think you guys are OK, middling program. But what do you think you're capable of accomplishing? I think we're we will be as strong as we tell ourselves we will be. Okay. Um, if we put in the effort, which we will, mm -hmm. if we um, come out every day prepared, which we will, if we, we play tough, which we will, and, and just give it all we got um, and give all the um, love and blessing to our coaches, our families, and our Heavenly Father, I think that we're, we're going to be as great as we want to be. So I don't have a number for yeah, that, sure. but, you know, I'm just a player, and uh, I'm just I'm – just, so eager to do anything that Coach A-Rod or Coach Fester or Coach Kalani or on special teams, what they need us to do and what they need from me so that we can be a great football team. So all those numbers and stuff, it is, is you know, those are people's jobs. You know, they, they come in and work and they have to put yeah. polls together on yeah. what that is. And just like my job is to come in and produce and, and yeah. be a great teammate and be a good person off the field. So. There you go, Cody Epps, BYU wide receiver. Thanks to him for taking the time. And it was good to hear him just acknowledge kind of the elephant in the room and say, hey, I made the decision to hop in, but I've been loved. And he under he also understood the some of the resentment, or I guess not the resentment, but some of the anger and some of the hurt feelings from some of his teammates from that decision to go into the portal. But uh, everybody I've talked to about Cody Epps says he's just he's come right back into the fold. Uh, he's earning his stripes. He's been a good teammate, and he's a big, big-time golfer. He's playing, uh, it's, I think he might have said it, did you say uh, daily, it feels like. So he is taking advantage of the opportunity being afforded to him as a member of the BYU football program and very much looking forward to seeing what else he can accomplish in a BYU uniform. And a big thanks to him once again for taking the time to join us right here on Locked on Cougars. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we got three things we still need to cover on today's show. Uh, a, a reason for Chance Harrison, he explains exactly why he decided to decommit uh, quietly over the weekend from the BYU football program. We'll examine that. We'll also talk about two games from the 2018 season as Zach Wilson, looking back on it, began to earn his, and I kind of not earn his keep, but find his footing, I, I guess I should say, when it comes to becoming the quarterback. We all uh, remember him being as late as the 2020 season. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. First, a word on our friends over at Perry Homes. They've been working on this for a few months now. The best part is that whether you're looking for your first home or ready to upgrade to your dream home, Perry Homes has a house for you, my friends. For 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder uh, with communities throughout the state. They have many communities, home designs, and price points to help meet your needs. More importantly, they've got beautiful communities in, along the Wasatch Front and down in southern Utah. Whether you want to live in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, or Utah County along the Wasatch Front, they got communities there. Or if you want to live down near St. George, multiple communities in Washington County, you guys can check 
check out as well. They offer over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes to help fit your needs in terms of whatever you're looking for, whatever stage of life you happen to be in. And the best part is they're offering generous financing incentives through their preferred lender as well. Right now, we all know the interest rates are insane. So get a little bit of a break on that would not be the worst thing in the world. So visit PerryHomesUtah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's PerryHomesUtah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your routine, everybody. A uh, quick reminder, uh, we are still uh, taking entrance, uh, I guess entrance, yeah, for our giveaway. Uh, signed football from Jaron Hall is the uh, grand prize. we got other BYU swag will be given away. I uh, had a very uh, kind gift uh, donated uh, to the podcast as one of the giveaways to do that. We'll have more details on that. It draws a little bit closer, but uh, the way to enter is to send us an email, lockedonbyu at gmail.com, and essentially take a screenshot of however you uh, subscribe to the podcast, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and the regular podcast form, or if you happen to watch and or listen to us on YouTube, just send us uh, essentially a confirmation that you are subscribed uh, to the show. And if you don't mind, uh, even if you're listening into it in the regular podcast format, audio version only, please go to YouTube and subscribe to the show there, even if you don't plan on watching it. Algorithms with YouTube appreciate people uh, subscribing to the channel. Obviously, recommend it to more and more Cougar fans. I've got a stated goal. I want to get to 5,000 subscribers on on YouTube to uh, get catching up to our regular podcast feeds. We've got thousands more than that on a daily basis, it feels like, when it comes to the regular podcast feed. But would get like to get to 5,000 YouTube subscribers by the time BYU kicks off the season. And uh, it's a pretty healthy goal because we're in the 3,200 range, a uh, version on 3,300 subscribers. Last I checked as of recording of this podcast. But uh, if you guys want to enter to win, like I said, uh, Jaron Hall signed football as well as other BYU swag. We're going to reward you guys. Uh, send us an email, locked on BYU. BYU at gmail.com. We'll get you entered to win. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, Chance Harrison, a, a defensive back prospect that had committed to BYU last fall out of Rio Mesa High School in Oxnard, California, uh, quietly decommitted over the weekend. His uh, commitment uh, disappeared off 24-7 sports. Had a couple of you send me a link saying, hey, Jake, what do you know about this? And I, frankly, I didn't know much. But he officially uh, announced uh, the reasons why he decided to back off of his commitment. He said this, after countless hours of praying and having plenty of time to talk to my family, I believe it's in my best interest for me to decommit from Brigham Young University, a.k.a. BYU. You. I would like to thank Gennaro Guilford and the entire BYU staff who played a major role in my commitment and recruiting me. Thanks to Kalani Satake and Coach Guilford for accepting my commitment as head and defensive coach. I enjoyed my visit down to BYU, visits down to BYU over the past year. Since my commitment in September of 2022, uh, if you recall, he committed in the immediate aftermath of BYU's thrilling win over Baylor last fall. He says, uh, since then, I have talked to Guilford and explained to him my plans and will continue to communicate with him and the staff moving forward. But at this moment, with other schools pushing hard in my recruitment. We believe it's in my best interest for me to uh, open my recruitment up 100%, giving all schools the opportunity to recruit me and for me to find a best fit for my abilities as a student athlete and a place to call home. Thanks, Chance. He also uh, tagged it on social media. Said, "Respect my decisions. Uh, respect my decision." Excuse me. Now I can understand why Chance uh, is deciding. You know what? I want to look at other opportunities because he is a guy that committed to a different defensive staff for BYU. Now he was projected to play defensive back and play for ostensibly a guy like Gennaro Guilford. I'm not going to count Chance Harrison's opportunity to come back and play for BYU down the road because I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. As he says, he uh, still is planning on talking to BYU. BYU's staff, but he's had offers come in from Arizona, Washington State. Uh, he actually recently just uh, visited Washington State, uh, visited Colorado State. So he's looking at his options, and I can respect that. Uh, obviously, if he feels like it's in his best interest to look elsewhere, so be it. But hopefully BYU can regain his uh, commitment because he's a pretty uh, decent athlete. Uh, mid a three-star talent, an 84 rating from 24-7 sports. Right about that with a composite rating of 84.70. Uh, so he's not necessarily the highest rated recruit in BYU's 2024 class, and he does leave BYU with just seven commitments now after he was the eighth, and he had decided to decommit, obviously, uh, dropping BYU's class to seven. But I, I would Wish Chance Harrison the best. I think best. Excuse me. I think he's a pretty good athlete. I've watched his film. He's got pretty uh, natural ability as a defensive back. He's also played offense uh, for his high school. But hey. 
Uh, maybe he comes back around and says, you know what, BYU is where I wanted to be uh, from the get-go, and we'll see what happens. But uh, don't count it out yet. Don't just write him off and say, that, okay, thanks, but th- no thanks moving along. I think he's just doing what's in his best interest, and I can respect that. If he, if he feels like he needs to look around, so be it. And hopefully Gennaro Guilford and BYU can earn his commitment back because, uh, like I said, it was a different defensive staff he committed to. Obviously, Coach Guilford was a holdover, but it's a new scheme, obviously, and BYU may be looking in, in, in terms of their interests as well and saying maybe this guy doesn't necessarily fit what we're looking for at the current time and uh, making sure that they cover all their bases as well. All right, uh, final notes on today's show is a look back at two more games in the 2018 season. We're taking these two at a time this season because they kind of uh, kind of piggyback and dovetail together in many ways because of the storyline of the 2018 season. We already talked about how at midseason BYU made the change from Tanner Mangum and installed Zach Wilson as their starting quarterback. Those of you who are everydayers with us heard us talk about the back-to-back loss, disappointing one to Northern Illinois, and obviously the heartbreaking loss uh, ending on the two-yard line up at Boise State. But the next two games for BYU after that, as they went into the month of November, uh, Essentially, I, I see it as Zach Wilson finally finding his footing at the tail end of the 2018 season. Now, tomorrow we'll talk about the Utah game, one the only game during BYU's independent era where they actually played the regular season finale against Utah due to a quirk uh, with the Big, uh, not the Big 12, the Pac-12 schedule at the time. But before that, BYU went out and beat up on both UMass and New Mexico State. Now. Uh, BYU ran away with a 35 to 16 win over UMass. Uh, Wilson passed for two touchdowns along with 167 yards in that game. Uh, BYU made pretty quick work of UMass despite trailing early. They ran 10-7 at the end of the first quarter, but then BYU from that point on tallied uh, 21 unanswered points before UMass tacked on six in the end uh, to give BYU the 35 to 16 record. Now, as I mentioned on yesterday's podcast as well, after BYU had lost to Boise State, we were talking all week long. Okay, is BYU going to go uh, bowless for the second? straight year. This one over UMass essentially reestablished, okay, BYU is now 5-5. Five and five. They need one more win to get to bowl eligibility, and that would come the very next week as BYU would take on New Mexico State. Another uh, patsy. Uh, UMass, for example, was 4-6 and uh, six coming into this game against BYU with an outside chance of getting to bowl eligibility, but they needed to beat BYU, and that did not happen. But then uh, BYU also, uh, the next week, uh, and that was a game, by the way, it played at UMass, so BYU took care of business on the road. Then they returned home to host New Mexico State who was 3-7 and seven coming in. So B- New Mexico State didn't have much to play for. Obviously, things were not looking up for them. But Lopini Katoa stole the show in this one. BYU ran away with a 45-10 to uh, 10 win. It was 7-7 after the end of the first quarter. But then BYU piled up 24 points in the second quarter to put this one out of reach, essentially. Lopini Katoa had one of his finest games in a BYU uniform. 19 carries, 155 yards, and the aforementioned four touchdowns. Matt Hadley had two other touchdowns. Funny enough, all six of BYU's touchdowns in this game came on the ground. Uh, Wilson actually did not have that great of a passing performance, actually sub 50%. Completion percentage, 12 of 26 for 172 yards. Tanner Mingham did get some time in this game, going one of three for 21 yards and threw a pick in this game. But uh, BYU got the win. That was all that really mattered for them in this one as BYU gets the victory and established themselves, got themselves the bowl eligibility. Now we would find out they would be going to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. That would come a few weeks later, but it was a big win for BYU because it got them back into the bowl season after missing out in 2017. Like I said, just two weeks prior to this, we have been having conversations on sports media saying, okay, BYU drops one or two more games. They're very much in danger of missing out on a bowl for the second straight year. But the nice part was Zach Wilson kind of found his footing. It was not perfect. Trust me. Like I said, the, the stats did not bear out that he was absolutely a monster in these two games. But it felt like he was trending up at that point, and things were looking up for BYU. But they would have a very, very tough game in the regular season finale against the University of Utah. And we will talk about that on tomorrow's podcast. All right. So there you go. You guys are up to speed on everything I have for you guys on this Wednesday. Wednesday edition of Locked On Cougars. Uh, regardless, thank you for all of your support of the podcast, no matter when you listen to it and or watch it. Appreciate all that. Please subscribe, rate, review the show, enable notifications on YouTube, and also make sure you share it with your family and friends and help us build this audience and get entered to win. We've had uh, hundreds of you already entered to win. We'd love nothing more than have hundreds more of you enter to win and have an opportunity to win that signed Jaron Hall football. So big thanks once again for making, us your, uh, making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. And thank you to all of you, the thousands of you, who are everydayers with us here on Locked On Cougars as well. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day, my friends. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.